Hi. Well, thank you for sticking around for a while. This is really not intended to be a presentation. I really want it to be a conversation. But I'll use some slides as thought starters. And the goal of this session, originally, we had um, conceived it as a kind of an orientation early in the program. Um, we wound up saving it because it really has to do with planning and um, the strategy for sharing information. So uh, I think this is my advance. So I'd like us to think of this, if you would, as a kind of a workshop. Um, I'll share some ideas with you. I'll hope to hear some feedback from you, and Kajini will capture our comments. As, and so they'll also be captured on video, and we'll be able to refer to this as we go forward. First, I thought I would, for those of you, and I think all of you are new, oh, Alistair not, um, to the Global Solution Networks program. And I said a little bit today, but I also want to, to you, give you the context of where we are in this journey, because that's exactly what it is. Don referred to it. Uh, we're about a year and a half into a program that is a three-year journey, and we have developed a huge uh, library of casework and, and uh, research already, but we're only halfway through our research agenda. And if you haven't had a chance to go to our website, um, all of the completed research, which is in your handout package, you saw the work that's been done. There is additional work that's underway. You heard about Bruce's project. There are many projects that are under development right now, and some that we are still looking for the right expert to write for us. So we match, we're matchmakers of experts with the topics that we've selected. And from this meeting, I think um, Don and I both took some notes and Anthony about additional projects that we might look at. So we're going to be continuing this work, the projects and the casework, um, through, the, through the middle of next year and continuing the journey as um, new ideas emerge and new, new partners join us. Bye. 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 Thanks, Don. So what I'd like to do is show you some of what we've accumulated in the way of tools and resources for you. And uh, our goal, of course, is to take what people refer to as our 30-page PDFs, of which we have many. And as I've said, they rarely make it to the top of the uh, bed stand for evening reading. They sometimes make it onto airplanes. Some of you do read online. But it's a lot of material. And in the past, we've had to ask people to really set aside the time to read this research. And I'm always thrilled when I hear that people have done that because it's very rich, but it does take time, which most of us don't have a lot of time. We also have to adapt the, the, the research as we translate it into accessible, flexible tools to the culture of the company. And one of the things I'm asking you for in our little workshop now is to react and say, you know, that's just not going to be useful for us at Cisco. Or at Cisco, we have a culture of authors, for example. So if you, you know, if you could fit that paradigm, then that would be a way for us to share the information. So we're talking about three levels of support. Information, which is in some ways just learning the taxonomy, finding out what GSNs are. I was talking to Rick as he left and said, how could we help with some of your climate change initi initiatives, some of which would lend themselves to GSN? And the very first step, would be to inform them that we see them through this lens and we see this as an opportunity. So information, number one. Number two is how is the information applied? And that not just applied, but analyzed. So we look at issues-based discussions. And this is the difference between the definition work and the issues-based discussions. Looking at poverty, looking at gender violence, looking at the implications for financial inclusion. We're calling that the application level. And then the third is implementation. And a lot of people are ready to start implementing. We're not really quite there yet. Um, for us to tell you how to implement a global solution network, we have a little more research to do. Now, if we were consultants, we could probably spend a weekend ginning up a method for you to implement a GSN. You could probably think of one yourself. But we really pride ourselves in our outputs being research-based. And we provide transparency on all of our thought process, and we get it, people engaged in the development of them. So implementation will be coming. And that's what I really want to talk to you about as part of my burgeoning task force of what kinds of tools would help in the implementation process. So we don't 
build it and they will come, we actually work with people to develop the right kinds of tools. So this, I love this slide because um, at the end of two days, this is maybe a little bit how you're feeling, um, you've absorbed a lot of information and not only have you absorbed all that information, but you're beginning to think about how in the world am I gonna communicate this to other people? So you have to filter it somehow and organize it and package it so that it can get back to your organization. As I often say to people, um, the GSN workshops are not personal development program. <laughs> They're really for you to learn for your organization and be able to share the information. So we have to help you package it. And I just, I know that at, at the end of a couple of days of this intense uh, ideation, it gets to look a little bit like this or feel like that. We asked a group of our sponsors to get together in February and begin this discussion with us. And they gave us feedback after a day at the Rockefeller Foundation that um, they needed tools on these, on the, for these three um, levels, which I already mentioned to you. So what is a GSN? Um, what is this model? Why does it matter to me? Who are the stakeholders? Uh, what are the best examples of GSNs? Those are the issues-based illustrations. And then how do I build one? And on the bottom, you see the beginning of an inventory of the kinds of tools we can provide. Remember, we're, we're working from a base of, of very dense research PDFs. Now, how do we synthesize that and deliver it in an intelligent and uh, valuable way? Well, the very th first thing, which you've seen several times, but I imagine if I took this down, you might not get all 10 of them right. Um, but nor are we asking people to memorize them, but we want that to be a framework for thinking. And I was really thrilled to hear um, that Rick is beginning to pick up on that vocabulary, and you did too in your presentation. Um, this just helps us organize our thinking about, around the networks, because before this program started, people were saying multi-stakeholder network. And then they're saying, is the multi-stakeholder network getting the job done? And the question is, what job is it trying to get done? It may be more than one, but it needs to be focused. So we're pretty excited about that, and we can give it to you in plastic, we can give it to you in a wristwatch, whatever way you want it, um, to make sure that you get familiar with that. Now this is kind of fun. So then we were told, you know, the, the white papers, um, can I, can I get a look? The white papers are dense and not everybody wants to read and people aren't patient with reading. So we've started a series of short videos, two minute videos. And uh, again, we don't want to do this in a vacuum, but I'll just give you a, a glimpse of one of the, this is a rough draft. I'm glad Donald left because he doesn't know I stole it. We haven't, we haven't finished the production yet, but let's just hear what this is. Can you play it? The first one? Yeah. <laughs> There's a fundamental change that's taking place in the world today about how we go about solving global problems and governing ourselves globally. We're seeing the rise of something new, multi-stakeholder networks, meaning networks that involve private companies, civil society organizations like NGOs, academics, foundations, government agencies, and individuals. And they work together using the internet, and they're self-organizing. They're not controlled by a state or state-based institution like the UN or the World Bank or the G8 or whatever. And they're attacking a global problem. These organizations today, using that definition, call them global solution networks, are going after every problem on the planet. They're engaging tens of thousands of organizations and tens of millions of people on a daily basis. And we've set out to understand what are these networks? What makes them tick? How do they, how do they become legitimate? How do they become effective? And we're creating a set of of intellectual property, case studies, best practices, big ideas, and tools that can help them be more effective in ensuring that this uh, smaller world that our kids inherit is a better one. Nice. Now that's a two minute video. And I know you've heard this material before, but I'm showing you this to give you an idea of some of the ideas we have for how to translate the content. And we expect to do dozens of these and make them searchable and sortable and eventually available on some kind of a platform. So any reaction to that as a idea? Like we have YouTube channels, GSN YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. 
GSN YouTube channel, Kajina is taking care of women. Yes, yeah, that we are. We have uh, a gentleman in New York working on it on our YouTube strategy, so that all this material will be available there, curated, hopefully subscriber-based, organized. It's, it, you know, it's all freely accessible. The real question is, in what context, in what sequence, should it be something you design yourselves? Should it be something that we prepackage for you? Um, imagine that there's one of these on every single network type. There's one of these on different stakeholder roles. Don has done four, one in each of what he calls the drivers of GSNs. And these are really designed for you not to have to tell your organization what we do and for you to be able to share the knowledge. So thoughts on how you might use that or? So I, if I could just this problem of sort of creating uh, accessible summaries of resources and then we deal with all the time. Good. Well. So I get that that's a very, very important exercise. In fact, we were just in Silicon Valley a couple of weeks ago for some events that we convened, and one of the guys there said, the words are dead. And it went more to the point of the Bones Scholar from last night or the book. So yeah. videos are really, really valuable. I think they're valuable for us. Um, I would just add that, in addition to sort of interviews with Don and Victor or whatever, uh, maybe sort of interviews with um, successful Good. Can you hear us, Kajina? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's excellent. And I actually have another slide which shows you some of our expert interviews, um, which we have yet to begin to capture our research process on video, but we want to take you directly to the experts and, and some of the case, the, uh, the network leaders. Great. What about the length? That was two minutes. Part of this is, is you know, I can only kind of think about this in the context of some bigger whole, right? Okay. So how am I going to use it? Am I going to use it as we decide to, we made a commitment, and now it's going to be part of how we frame the whole initiative and the program. And so then I'd have to sit there going, okay, you know, what am I, do I need, you know, and that's again, do I need to educate others on this or what? So I think that's the hard part is I would want to use different assets for different things. But, exactly. You know, to achieve what? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we again use videos all the time as well. Um, one of the yeah, things that's used as much video as we can get. Yeah, straight on the internet. That would be many times. <laughs> but one of the things that, um, you know, it, it's really important for people to find what they want. And so whether you take like a meeting like this and you can chunk it into, you know, questions or something, but um, it's really important to, to match up what you're answering or trying to convey with the video. So many times, you know, it may be a great video, but I left going, so what, you know. Oh, this is just a little exactly. prototype, yeah. No, I know, but yeah, again, yeah. sometimes you get so distracted because I'm like, well, that's a really interesting video angle or whatever. So you just have to What's be very like? clear about, mm -hmm. you know, what you're trying to achieve with the process. Good. Yeah, and that's, that's a whole design process that we're going to be undertaking. I'm sort of giving you a glimpse of some of the building blocks, but that's very, that's very important. Just a thought. Um, Joe Skirton, the, the main graphic with all the different you know, circles, mm -hmm. if someone wanted, if that was the starting point, if someone wanted to find out about a particular uh, network, if they just click on the network and then have a video to tell us about that Perfect. Network. Yes. Click on type. So we would have, yes, and I'll show you some more resource build out ideas in a minute. But if you have a type of network that you're looking at, what else, what other tools are available? How do you implement that particular type? What are the cases that come from that type? Yes, excellent. One of the things that resonates for our audience is quite a bit is a Ted Light talk. So we've even moved internally in our internal, we just had a <coughs> strategy with the top, I don't know, what is it, maybe two or 3,000 of us get together and yeah. learn about our strategy for the next year. And we've switched it all to be very Ted like 20 minutes with storytelling that's super rich. And what I found this year after SLX is I walked away with a lot more retention than mm -hmm. normal. Mm -hmm. And then we were able to embed it into some work we were doing instantly, right? Like, you know, so um, I'm wondering if you may think about that as a format um, in a, to supplement maybe some of the two-minute format, mm -hmm. which is nice because it's super on demand and very pointed at a thing. 
I wouldn't want to replace that, but at the same time, to bring in some of the branding and the storytelling through a TED Light talk, because you know you're going to spend 15 minutes and you kind of, or 20 minutes, and you know that going in, but you're going to walk away with something super tangible and useful. Good, yeah. And storytelling is very important, and it actually is one of our strengths. Um, that's why we use cases. That's why Don has been so effective because he does do storytelling, and you can't tell much of a story in a two minute video. Yeah, that's why I suggest Okay, excellent. Um, let's play the next one. This is another one I want to ask you about. The content is familiar, but I'm interested in the medium. The industrial economy is finally running out of gas. We're at a turning point in human history. At the same time, the contours of a new kind of civilization are becoming clear as millions of connected citizens begin to forge alternative institutions using the web as a platform for innovation and value creation. So, just a clip. This is actually from a Wikinomics animation. But before we start investing in animation, which as you know is not inexpensive, I wanted to get your reaction to this. We've been experimenting with this as well. Um, I find this is a good meeting for complex or complicated problems. <laughs> complex or complicated. But I do think that that, you know, to me it really resonates with like if more of an academic where again I'm really understanding that. The challenge with this is you've got to find a great vendor. Otherwise you can spend a ton of money and, and I mean I just I'll just give you a slight antidote. We were trying to create one and um, you know they came back and there were a lot of you know barbed wires on it. I'm like <laughs> Not quite sure that's the image we want to project, right? And so I think that that's a hard part is do they understand the art? They, they need to understand the sophistication yeah. of your audience. Otherwise, yeah. you're the ones giving them the script and the yes. yeah. yeah, it worked with RSA animation. Yeah. RSA. 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 Yes. RSA. In yeah. fact, well, RSA is quite exclusive, and we've um, we should. We, 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 are you part of RSA? Yeah. So maybe you could introduce us to the animator. Um, we Don spoke at RSA last year, and we yeah, asked. RSA. Okay. Yeah. We asked RSA to animate. They only choose a few for animation, so they Thanks. didn't animate ours. But we can certainly work with their vendor, who is very good. The same thing is true with video. Um, we we had a, a request for video scripts from our research team, and we hired someone who we thought might be able to help. Well, the fact is these guys have the content so internalized that a, a, a script writer can't possibly give them a better treatment for the topic. The two-minute videos are good because you don't really need, it's sort of like a television take. Mm -hmm. You don't need, I mean, a, yeah, movie take. You don't need much of a script to do two minutes. But scripting and understanding the content for animation, big challenges. And some yeah. of our, yeah. But you could save it for some of your more complex things where there's yeah. a lot of inner curious energies in a topic. And also, it's very visual. It allows people, mm -hmm. so when you're really trying to convey a certain message, you're increasing the likelihood of the stickiness of it by using that medium. So you, know, you kind of pick and choose mm -hmm. the ones might be the best way to do it. Yeah. The truth is, everybody is different. I'm very visual. I absolutely love these things. I tend to, even a two minute video, I can tune out. It's amazing, <laughs> but um, I'm a good reader. So everybody has different learning styles, and that's what we're trying to. I like to... everything in miniseries. So. <laughs> Did you say Yes, costume drama. Yeah, Downton Abbey. <laughs> All over us. Gia said it, Downton Abbey. Okay. I know someone who can do that. Very, very good. Great. If you would, anybody who has a resource idea. Um, shoot an email to, to Kajina who will capture it for us and we'll, we'll put it in the pot. And any, also, we'll ask you later if you'd like to join our task force and sort of stay in the loop with us because we want to keep testing things with you. Now, I think you may know that um, those of you who are sponsors, your company is entitled to an executive briefing. But that doesn't mean it has to be a turnkey keynote speech. And Don is very good at adapting his content to your industry or to your company. Um, when he's on campus, you can, you can put him in front of an employee group, an executive group, a customer group. It's essentially a one-day Don Tapscott free-for-all. So um, think about how to use that. And, and we'd like to see some creative, creative ideas. What we've done here is show you another medium, which uh, we saw done very effectively by um, one of our colleagues. And that is um, a video that you can search by topic. 
So it's actually a continuous video, but you can pick the place you want to jump in. Oh, this is McKinsey style. Yeah, yeah, yeah Mike. Right. Yeah. Different from the two-minute searchable <laughs> clip, it actually gives you an index and you can jump through the video. I, I think love, this, I forward these all the time and I say, watch the middle part or whatever. Yeah, you know, by topic, topic or the yeah. one, the part you think is effective. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we would give this one a thumbs up, Kajina. I think this is um, a good, for the video format. Um, now I mentioned the expert interviews. Now you would be amazed, the, the wealth of information that we gather, you probably wouldn't be amazed, we're a research company, but um, rather than have it just be distilled by the writer into a paper, we're trying to capture the IP from the research process as it goes along. So this is the group of uh, expert interviews that we captured just for one paper, actually it was a two-part paper, Don's referred to it several times, the Internet Governance Paper. Um, these are the absolute leaders of the movement and people with a tremendous uh, inter interesting things to say. As I said, we didn't try to audio file them or video file them, but this is an interview that people can read. So when we get to the platform discussion, read more, click more, you can dig down into the information that's of interest. And these papers will then become um, I'll show you later, part of a, a cluster of resources around a given topic. Now, some of you are new and you, don't, you haven't heard our uh, webinars, but just because I could, I put the audio in these. So let's just, I'll give you a little glimpse of, um, you met Tom and this is, he did a, a web webinar for us on orchestration. I won't play the whole thing. <laughs> we found, um, for example, looking at the climate realm, um, where we tried to map more or less what we think is a total universe of global solution networks and other forms of governance um, involving sub and non-state actors and new kinds of things. And then we found about a third of them owe either their uh, initiation or a good deal of support or guidance from more traditional actors. So there's a lot going on um, in the orchestration realm. That's fine. That's fine. Um, we do these periodically, and they generally have three or four people, in, or maybe I would say three people in the webinar. Um, the topics are, are somewhat vetted by the sponsors and the members to, to choose them. Um, in this case, it's someone from our faculty. Um, in the other case, we were looking at knowledge networks and open pediatrics um, as a case that Anthony referred to earlier. So let's just give uh, Tracy a click. Three real main goals that we wanted to do, and one was to provide information on demand. So if a provider has a sick patient in front of them, they can go to the site and look up information and find ways to perform procedures, um, to think about key concepts, to understand key problems. Um, and they can go and watch videos, they can download protocols, um, and they can interact with simulators or use medical calculators or sort of different uh, ways to figure out equations that they might um, need to find online. It's audio only. Yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't consider that a webinar. I would consider that a, you know, an MP3. MP3, okay, well that's what we should call it then. Um, we can do that. I think um, not everybody uses slides. Our webinars are sort of, I guess, like podcasts, more like a okay, radio a show. Podcast. Yeah. Um, we have some with slides, we have some without slides. Yeah, that's hard sometimes for me because then I'm like, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be getting from. But that's some right. people love the download. So. Yeah. Yeah. One idea might be to have a, a listening guide, like a PDF that people can download that, that where they, it's a template, but they take notes on it based on what they hear. That gives them an overall impression. So it's like a handout or a worksheet. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Um, yeah. That might be a useful complement to just listening. Because otherwise, if it's just audio, then people are only registering a certain fraction of it. Yeah. If you complement audio with visual, then you get a much stronger um, amount of attention. That's great. We'll be, we're just beginning the process of, of developing actual um, learning tools or, right. or um, uh, accompanying templates or yeah. um, frameworks. So I'm really showing you the raw material that we're working with. We have been uh, making audio files of our webinars for a year and a half. I, how many th times do you think they've been downloaded? So not, because if, you, if you're if you a sponsor and you missed it, you tell yourself, oh, I'm glad it's on uh, an audio file, I'll be sure to listen. And it's just one of those things that people have a hard time making time for. 
So your feedback is great, and we need to upgrade what we're capturing to make it more accessible. I mean, almost, we do all our meetings via a web. Most of our meetings are you know, by web, and we do all the times recorded. And so I will go back, and this is because I know there's a critical piece of information or decision, or I need to understand that context. But it's very hard, I think, just scheduling when you're sitting there going, I couldn't make it then. Right. I still can't therefore, make it. Unless you can say, that was a half an hour, I've and always, I'm going to give yeah. you an And what we've done to, to, to yeah. deal with that um, is we have catalogs. Yeah. Like yeah. an old-fashioned catalog. Think library catalog, right? Yeah. That some, it's all digital, of course, and it's all online. And you can go back if any member of the team, we have them for the entire team, and then we have some that are leadership team ones. And, you can go back and you can look at the agenda and you can click the button and it takes you to that recording. Yeah. Right? We, so you know exactly what you're yeah. getting. Like I see open pediatrics, I have, still have no clue what she's going to talk about. None yeah, this, this was in, a, right. it was it's in a, like, I still don't know, yeah. right? Like I yeah. want to know. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. So right. Kind of like, right. I see put the button at the bottom of the Kinsey, right? It doesn't even have to be parsed. Just, yeah. You know, yeah, I just clipped this out of a larger webinar on knowledge networks. So you're right. You would be yeah. finding chunks within that. Yeah. And, and it'd be interesting to see what how other people have solved this problem. But you know, there's this vast amount of information you're creating, and then you're creating derivative of the vast amount of information. And you know, this so who who what is the audience that needs that vast amount of information? Right. And how do you create very useful derivatives? One of the things that works sometimes to do that is to whatever they're taught, whatever's being spoken about in the webinars, reframe it into a question. Because if I see it as a question, then I'm like, oh, I want to know the answer to that question, mm -hmm. right? So you can, if you, I often have used that. I, my past life when I ran a research team, I always presented data and had my team present data as the answer to a question. The answer to a question. Excellent, yeah. great idea. Yeah. Just a quick um, um, suggestion. I I'm sure Jen wants to be very inclusive. So is it possible we can uh, uh, install some auto, what's it called, um, auto text for the people with hearing problems? So they can be part of the solution. Sure. I mean, that's something to wrote. We've actually had some people offer to do translations for us, too. And that's another part of that cultural challenge. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll see how that develops. But this is great feedback. And the, this, uh, what I'm really showing you is, is somewhat um, candidly where we, where we are and what we want to do a better job at. All of this is on our website. Everything, all the it, webinars, yeah. It's interesting, again, because I have a different mindset when I think of tools is something that I can use to advance work or, or something like that, where a lot of this is communication. Oh, we're access. getting to that. Well, this is just, yeah. Let me, I'll fast right. forward. <laughs> I'm just show you, showing some of the building blocks because to develop something like that, we'd have to have content that um, came from the research. So here is sort of the next level of build out. This is the, the paper I referred to, um, the Remarkable Internet Governance Network, which is a huge paper in two parts. I think it's almost 80 pages of PDF. And what we did was we put it up on our website along with links that were very pertinent at the time of the publication. There was a lot of uh, certainly dialogue and controversy around internet governance at the time. We've got some press releases and we've got other connected links that we think would be relevant. This is the first attempt at adding additional value be beyond the PDF. Um, it gets much more interesting when you start looking at things like platforms, so we'll, we'll get to that. But this was the first step. If you look at our website, you will see under featured research, this is the first project that we treated this way and we're trying to grow these um, resources around the project as we go along. And the next level of sophistication after that, and this is this goes back to your point about who's the audience? So um, curated communities, what a great idea. For whom? And does this help the corporations who are sponsoring the research, or does this help the people who are trying to solve a problem within a certain issue area? And these are all questions that we have to answer still. In the workshop that we did, we built a template for corporations to think about who are my audiences and which tools would I want to use to inform them or, or um, engage them, or possibly even implement a GSN with um, the sponsors or customers. 
So this is an example of the financial inclusion paper. This doesn't exist yet. This is the beginning of formulating. This paper had a tremendous amount of resource around it, links to other networks, multiple network types that, um, for which there were case illustrations. There are cases in the papers, the paper itself. And, uh, and, then, and then we, um, we just clipped a piece of SAP IP just to show you. Then you can have a mini site within mm -hmm the curated community. So it could take lots of shapes, but I guess the bigger question is, curated communities are kind of a platform social network sort of phenomenon. Is that serving a real purpose? If you're not a financial inclusion maven, is this important to you? If you're a Matul, it could be very important to you. So we have to make sure that we're adjusting for people's interests. Any thoughts on this? Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible we can, this, uh, we can link it to any moderated blog? Sure. You can link it to almost anything. Yeah, blogs, video. But it has to be moderated. <laughs> well, curated. I mean, I, I like the word curated because you can, there's, a, there's software you can buy that will put everything in this, that has financial inclusion in the title <laughs> connected to this. But we want to make sure that it's value at the right level. It's just a lot of work. And um, so, for example, financial inclusion, interesting, but not our kind of, you know, focus area is going to be your focus area, right? So then, are you curating this community for how many people? And are you committing to keeping it up to date for how long? Yes. You know, so those are some of the things. I, I definitely think that curating is going to create a higher level of relevance and a better experience. The question is, can you afford to do that based yeah. on resources and cost? And well, is, it, is it around the launch of something and your commitment is just, we're going to create that initial launch experience and not mm -hmm. afterwards? Or Good. Yeah, and that's actually the first one you saw was a launch with dated launch, dated material. <clears throat> and this is um, a, 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 a planned. And we took four areas, and these we call them experiments. So we would look at financial inclusion, we would look at youth unemployment, we'd look at standards networks because it has attracted a huge amount of interest. We were actually quite surprised. We thought it would be very dry. People are really gravitating toward it. Um, and the fourth one is the internet topic. So we picked those four to do this kind of experimentation and this feedback will help us. And, it, and again, depending on your audience, language, yeah. and we we've done one of these curated networks. Um, we, uh, eventually ended up exiting the education suite. Um, we had a lot of, when, we, when it was time for us to exit, the receiving organizations couldn't receive it. Mm -hmm. What we learned was it is so much effort to curate the content in the mm -hmm. community over a period of time, right? Yeah. Um, but if you're interested, we can plug you in with um, maybe the it's, woman maybe who it's managed a, that project for about four or five years. Yeah, I would love to. If she, you, she probably have a lot of good information. And this also, where I think this fits really well is if your business model is the network builder. So if my job is to build the GSN network for X particular thing, yeah, that's so part of that, that right? Then I'm going to curate, curate perhaps. Because it's, it's, it's self reinforcing. Mm -hmm. So then, right? Where is the, the, yeah. <laughs> you, you build that network. You, in fact, this could be a great add on, right? Because you're doing yeah. matchmaking. Yeah, but we, we have an internal set of uh, yeah. platform as well called the C40 streams yep. that we use for, so every network has its own page with resources and similar things. But it's very much an active, continuously updated yes. thing with yeah. discussion forum, with webinars posted, with people comments. The workplace. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, it, and, it, and you do have to have people who are engaged on a daily basis. Right. And we have, a, we have a, a secret sauce, which is that all of our projects have an author. So we know that be beginning the curation is the person who wrote the, the um, concept paper. So we're asking the people for the projects I mentioned to curate, initially curate the introduction of their paper and the connection of resources. They have the cases from the writing. They have the networks that they met. Um, but then on an ongoing basis, I think it would have much more to do with people who were either specialists in this area or building a network of their own. So it, it also has like, what is the shelf life of this mm -hmm. content? Yeah. And that's, that's part of the challenge in this, you know, especially some of these ideas that are rapidly evolving. Yeah. It, it was great work at the time. Is it going to be great? Is right. it going to be relevant six months from now? So you got to just and sometimes balance it's that. Yes. And sometimes it's hard to predict that. 
that is a huge, a huge help. Just thinking about the time frame, and uh, we put something up under featured research when it's brand new, then it might go to curated community for a while, and then we might watch the traffic or have it be time stamped. Very helpful. Okay, now I'll just make a leap to, um, and this won't necessarily apply to everyone, but um, someone might ask you, well, I want to implement a GSN, what do I do? And we've been asked that a lot, and we're not ready to uh, answer it entirely, but these are some of the components that we think need to go into it, as you said earlier, some diagnostic tools, some self-help tools, and um, either uh, being able to teach people how to implement a GSN if you're a foundation, or building one yourself if you're a, a nonprofit or an NGO who wants to um, get to work. So you saw this example, and we're very intrigued by this one just because of the design of it is not unlike the, the journey that our, our audience is on. And Don used it, I think Anthony used it too. Um, I didn't know they were all gonna use it, so <laughs> we all used it. Yeah. Part of the question, I think, still comes back to your business model versus others, right? Because are you are you going to build a practice around offering Great that question. consulting? Yeah. Are you going to build? Because we've tried so many different versions of this, and we're not a professional consulting organization, so I'd like to get other people's opinions. But we built extremely rigorous diagnostic and realized there's no one, you know, who's going to be able to go do it. It's We've done very lightweight ones, but then does that really count to anything? Mm -hmm. So I think you've got to somewhat understand. To me, implementation tools really who's going to do the implementation at least, and maybe develop it with the first customer. That yeah. First one is highly relevant. Great. Yeah, but co developed. I think that's important. I sh I'll answer this um, the question. We are, I'm showing this as a self-help example because they are not a consulting firm. They've built a site that's very lightweight. It's all about being a social entrepreneur, making a difference in the world, and it's very fundamental. Where are you? Have you just thought of it and you don't know where to start? Are you, have you been at it for a while and can't get it off the ground? It's like this is self-help, so I think this would be, you would have a way of guessing or finding out at the end if you had achieved knowledge of this content, but you'd still be implementing on your own. That's what this example this is. Again, we, we were talking, who had the comment earlier today about are you measuring the process or the results? Mm -hmm. And I think that, that there are a lot of these self-help. The challenge is it's hard to really deliver expertise in a significant way that's gonna change global solutions. It's really, you know, issues. So then this becomes more of awareness, it's not, self-help unless you're putting up a ton of really rigorous stuff. Yeah. Well, we, we imagined... Cons online consulting. I wonder if I kept this. No, I didn't. Um, the next level in this model takes you to the blueprint page and then other reading, other reading. So in theory, if we wanted to build a robust version of this, I mean, imagine this is just a um, matchsticks. If we wanted to really show people the hows, the, the, uh, the, the intricacies, the, the common the failures, we would build a whole curriculum along this model. But the whole idea here is that you can, you can figure out where you are and then you can dig in as deeply as you want to. And all the frames have tell me more, take me deeper. Um, and I, as I said, we're not here to design an education solution yet, but I wanted to get your reaction to the approach, so that's great. I, mean, I think there's benefits yeah, so what I was going to say was, um, I was at a presentation a couple of years ago uh, given by a company called Intuitive. Uh, sorry, Ontuitive. I mean, Ontuitive. There was a, um, and they, they were showing like a, a sort of pyramid. It's like, okay, it's just in time. You want that bit yeah. right there. Yeah. Actually, if you want to dive deeper, da, 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 you know, there's a yeah. pyramid. And for me, um, the 10 types, um, yes, absolutely, it's a really useful taxonomy. Um, but for me, I come into it personally from a different angle. Mm -hmm. So for example, I'd say, actually, I'm really interested in what's happening in education, right? Mm -hmm. education. Yep. So I'd say, okay, come into education yeah. first and go, oh, here's this knowledge network and th these are leading mm -hmm. examples of knowledge networks in education and you know, advocacy and, mm -hmm. you know. And so I think it's, I think it'd be really interesting in terms of, you know, how, how people exactly. come in mm -hmm. and access, what, what's their, yeah. yeah. And I think barriers too. 
another place. If you're having a particular type of challenge or barrier, yeah. that's another uh, common entry point where someone says, oh, yeah. now I need help. I'm going to go somewhere and look. Yeah. And now that, you know, so yeah. even supplementing all of this as you start launching it with things like blogs on more traditional places like Huffington Post and LinkedIn and places like that, you know, the 10 common problems of implementing global social change, you would, you would have a hit on your hand would start driving a lot of people to the site. That's the other thing is once you start doing something like this, get a shell up and then watch what people do. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're a research firm, so you get to yeah, do yeah. your own thing on your own thing, right? Yeah. So you can and what's watch what really people do. interesting is that, is that one of the advantages you have, uh, one of many, right? But, but for example, your relationship with Google, and also Google yes. is a big chunk of Build you an algorithm. <laughs> right, yeah, algorithms yeah. And, and you know search efficiency and all this kind of stuff are really getting very, very to that sort of next level of, of intelligence of, of mm -hmm. search and, yeah. and relevance and actually going beyond relevance um, over time to deeper factors, you yeah. know, resonance factors, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm getting a little bit No, 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 this <laughs> is good. There was, there was a company um, ten years ago called Means Business and they applied um, a search algorithm to conceptual management strategy books, and they searched everything by concept. And you could literally put in an idea, and up would come six book abstracts or a page of an abstract verbatim from that book. Um, they lost their funding, and I, but I don't think they lost the technology. But right now, our search is pretty clumsy. That kind of search for people like ourselves is what we're after. Usually, right? it's helpful. Yeah. The other thing that you know. Donna talked about we're building a network here, which which is true. If there was a way that I knew what people were looking at, who they trusted, what they're reading, that again would be a huge value to me because mm -hmm. again, especially coming to something like this, and I've seen them, I go, I like the way that person thinks. Yeah. That again, in something like this that is not just from your organization, but fed exactly. us, whether it, again it's just that's why the LinkedIn um, platform has been recommended to us because um, apparently it's working well. If you can get yourself into that water system, people are more apt to have dialogue there. It's hard, as you all know, to say, I'm going to have a website with more yeah. conversation, but people are already going to LinkedIn, so that could be a topic um, and a way to get that dialogue going. I, don't, just, I would just add that I completely agree, I think, especially sponsors work Yes. Mm -hmm. Talking to each other, which you know, just doesn't happen. They can't have a friend in the industry. Mm -hmm. That to me is an interdisciplinary, yeah. cross sectoral collaboration conversation is where the future is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Surprises. Yeah. You may even want to ask members of the network to volunteer to write book reviews that you could publish. Really short ones, 500 words. Of books that they recommend. I don't think I've been. So, uh, well, yeah. so everybody will want to read. <laughs> I did my I did my homework trial on this meeting. I don't think I I hit home with it, but um, yeah, just whatever contributions people want to make. And I mean, um, Cisco. I'm sorry, it's, it's Google who does the books. Right? Google does the read a book. Everybody reads a book. Um, but once you get that in the culture, then people are likely to do it. Okay. Um, now that's. I don't want to say that we are going to walk away from peer-to-peer -peer interaction because meetings like this, talking about surprising things happen, you meet people, you're cross-cultural. Um, we're big believers in, I hate peer-to-peer, -peer, but I'm not sure what else, live, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so we do have a, uh, the first template for uh, how, do, how do I get my GSN off the ground workshop, which, um, and again, to your point, Mary, we're not really trying to become consultants. I want to answer that. No, we are not planning to open a consulting company. Although Purpose is a consulting company, and others who are in our space um, intend to consult with people to take to help them with implementation. We're a research company. Um, if if anybody went off to do a consulting assignment, we'd have to shut it down because we don't have enough people. But we do want to give people who care to do consulting, and we'll do all the testing and development, and we'll look for partners who may want to do implementation with their networks. Um, that, that's our plan at the moment. Can I ask a question, and this is probably for everyone, because I've heard you say, and others say, if you want to start a GSA, and, and I think that they're already there. It's oh, a question yes. of what is the current environment 
and what role might we or you know a set of us want to play and so not to say that there might not be ones you you know decide to launch in a big way but they're to me it's they're already there that's correct just haven't well, they're actually in various stages. So that's why I thought the Sojo example was good because this is for somebody who's like, what's the problem I'm trying to solve? Who are my stakeholders? What's my funding model going to be? That's sort of um, square one. But there are big, big NGOs, for example, um, take World Vision. If we, and we are talking to World Vision saying, you should consider this as a tool. They're not starting at the beginning. They have a footprint that covers the whole planet. So it's a question of optimizing the tools they have or scaling, if it's a small social entrepreneur, scaling their already successful um, uh, viral idea to a larger so network. So there's a lot of other verbs I would suggest using. Yeah. How do you want to activate yeah. the GSM or harness the GSM? Yes, or scale. The GSM. Mm -hmm. Because I think that that... Or even just what are... Who are the GSMs yeah, yeah. in play, right? Your your comment earlier, like I'd be coming in through education. You want to know who are the advocacy groups versus yeah. the uh, operational delivery networks versus yeah, the great. platform folks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just knowing who they are and to to do what you're talking about, to do the interdisciplinary work and to think about who are, are the other. For us, one of the things we're trying to look at across Cisco is how do we get, we've done a lot of partnering with our traditional competitors, yeah. Microsoft and, and others in the new work, one of the things we're interested in doing is getting more into doing it with our customers. Well, yeah. Which of our customers are doing what, yeah. right? And it's hard to go ask the sales team to have that conversation. They yeah. don't have time to have that conversation right. necessarily. So it comes off very organically. Yeah. Oh, Verizon wants to do this and we want to do this. Okay, good, let's go do that together. Yeah. Um, but that's hard to make happen. Yeah. Um, it takes a long time. But if you yeah. start knowing who all the players are and what they think yes. their care about mm -hmm. are, in a play, I mean, and that's something that you guys are uniquely do. Yeah, and that's why we need to begin to think about how to pull the pieces together. Yeah. So that's why yeah. we're only, that's okay, we're just scratching the surface. Um, and and I, this is an important conversation because as a team, we toss out the idea of a platform. Yeah, yeah, let's have a platform. Yeah. And you heard the discussion yeah, about yeah. platforms. Yes. I mean, they come in so many shapes and sizes, and including Burning Man. Mm -hmm. So what would a platform look like? What, what audience would it be serving? Would it be a knowledge network kind of platform? Would it be a, a, an octopus doing something for education and something for the 10 types? And how would we organize that? Um, initially, it was knowledge network. Now we're looking to have more education tools, more implementation tools. and the curated community or birds of a feather, and then how many legs does this platform have? So that is the beginning of our platform discussion, just a tiny, tiny smattering of some of the stuff that could be there. Are you thinking, because there's also something, you can go broad, and you know, or you could go deep, take uh, the financial group, you could go very deep there, and say, so now I've built it out for that right. intersection of that particular issue and the GSN point of view. Yeah. Or you could build out a whole lot of the middle and light up. And yeah, I, my thought so far is that there is a generic kind of a GSN platform, like what is it, where am I in my journey, who are some of the resources I can get to. But I think if we, ha if we found the topics that people cared about, if it was financial inclusion, if it was education, we could go deep with momentum. Now, I don't want to design a big, deep website and find out that that was the wrong topic. So it has to be organic. And I don't know this, but before you go broad, make sure that going broad really is relevant. Or mm -hmm. does it only become relevant when you go deep enough? Mm -hmm. into yeah. this or they intersect. Maybe because somehow. That's but I think this is where the, the research piece uh, is so important. So for me, what's going through my mind is this Global social network portal, you know, you like portal. Mm -hmm. and, and there's so much obviously already happening all around the world. And it reminded me of when the B team launched last year, and they were saying, okay, well, these are the kind of top top five or top ten issues that, that we want us to focus on. What we're most interested in doing is finding examples of good stuff that's working really well to help help scale the best ones, right? Mm -hmm. So if they could come to you and go, Actually, we've got a whole bunch of resources here, and we want to, you know, the whole kind of Bucky Fuller and Trim Tab actions and investments, all that kind of stuff. 
But the point being, they could come to you as one of the key portals of research that's already been gathered, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. scale what's really working. Yeah. And, then, and then helping more people tap into that to build firm momentum, bringing their additional skills and resources to stuff that they're passionate about. Um, and so that sort of, uh, if you like, that user uh, mm -hmm. interface and interaction, if you like, well, but driven mm. by those intrinsic motivation factors. Mm. And then you find out where your, where the 700 or so individuals we talked about earlier, where they spend their time. Because you've got Facebook there and stuff. I, you know, I spend my time on a few different places, and that's it. Yeah. And, you know, so they can see the new website says, oh, come to this place, we're going to curate a bunch yeah. of time. It yeah. has to add just some significant value. Yeah. Yeah. So we really need to talk about 700 different places. I didn't realize we were going to go to the other place in terms of 700 people on that. I was thinking, ah, right, you know, 0.01%, boom. The 700 <laughs> people on that area are running the show. Right? Yeah, that's so where are they? Yeah. <laughs> We actually, um, the recent posts, whether it's blogs, whatever, recent, 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 this is what people I think really resonate uh -huh. with. Um, because too often these post your blog places, you went there and the last posting was September of last year. Yes, exactly. But we began with Facebook as part of our strategy and then we dropped it and then we were told, oh, you should have it. So we're really ambivalent, but LinkedIn is where we think the, the momentum is for us. Okay, um, so then I was studying this guy, Sanjeet Chowdhury. Does anyone know who he is? He has, if you make a note of his name, he's done some amazing, if you care about platforms, amazing YouTube videos for the MIT Media Lab. And I will confess I'm an early student of his work, but he's brilliant. And his, his focus is uh, uh, platforms for Silicon Valley startups. So he's not talking about knowledge networks or education. He's talking about if you're somebody with an idea and you think a platform is how you're going to make your million, here's how you should think about it. And he's quite brilliant. But the thing that really grabbed me was that um, he really talks about it on the, at the level of user interaction. You don't start with the content. You don't start with your planned outcome. You start with what are the users doing with each other? Just as Matul said, who's talking to whom, why? So I loved his metaphor, which was, it starts like a lemonade stand. It's just one transaction. And uh, think about who your first user is going to be. You know, is it $25 for a glass of lemonade? You might want to modify that to get that first user in the door. And then you've got a business model. But I, I thought the metaphor was really helpful. And um, you can look him up on YouTube, because he, he gave me a lot of good ideas. And, he, and his bullets are pretty predictable. He says, ease of connection and use. We all know this mantra from being in the technology business. This is mind mapping. And this, this um, uh, wonderful member of our community has been sending us mind maps on our own research. So this is a mind map that she sent us on the seven power tools paper um, and just was playing with the tools. And then uh, we uh, actually bumped them all up already. But you would click into the details on this. So if you saw something you want to see on incubators, then you might go to success factors and you can click into the mind map at various levels. This addresses some of the things we were talking about before, but it's a, a piece of software, very easy to use. Um, I think you know, visualizing sort of interconnectivity, um, uh, interdependence, um, it's, it's just, just really important. I think that's where the firm of visuals really mm -hmm. So the next one is a magnet for interaction. Um, and this is not, it's not quite as straightforward, but these are, these are actually Sanjit's um, bullets. Gravity being the attraction, the magnetic attraction of either the topic, is it gender violence and I care deeply about this? What is attracting me to the space? Um, and on both sides, who's producing the information, who's consuming the information? Am I a victim? Am I an author? Why am I there? Um, and the platform sits in the middle. So the platform is there, as we said, to enable people to connect or share information. Matchmaking, I have to confess, was not top of mind for me. I thought, oh, matchmaking. So how do, where do I, do I go to this place because I'm correctly matched with people with whom I have interests in common? And of course, he's using commercial matchmaking um, illustrations like dating. But if you went there and the people that you met were all members of the royal family, you'd think, well, maybe I'm in the wrong matching pool. 
But it's <laughs> but it's really a matter of, of making sure that you're talking to people who speak your language. And let's face it, our language is, is uh, pretty uh, impenetrable sometimes. Um, and then trust, which was mentioned many times during the meeting. But um, once I've been there, do I trust that I will get continued quality, um, and that will keep me engaged? So these are you know factors that we want to consider. Matchmaking is one that we would need to address, and I haven't really thought through how that would happen, but it, we would learn from it as we went along. So magnet for attraction, and then scaling. So we, you know, we think, oh, being a GSN, you should scale. And, you know, how do you scale? Well, he says you scale by adding interactions. So if, I'm, if I were you know, talking about the city's platform, um, I start with one interaction. You know, maybe it just has to do with transportation. Then I add housing, or then I add talk to people who are holding a conference on housing, and I add interactions that bring value. And in this case, I can interact in real time. Maybe that's something that I really care about. I start there, and then I begin looking at video files and, and documents. So uh, again, I'm, I'm, this is not my original material, but I felt it was really helpful. If we're going to grow the platform from a seed, we grow it organically by adding transactions, not building everything that we can think of into it and saying, how do you like it so far? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on this from your own experience? I mean, I agree with the, the concepts here in terms of the platform. Just recognize that it's a lot of work and how is this core to your business? Because I've seen these fail when it's not core to the business and all of a sudden you're like, wow, it's pulling me away from our core mm. to maintain it and support it. So just think about that. You know, and I think also the point of where are people, does it make sense for you to have your platform or to find where mm -hmm. your network is and put your information, contact, interaction there? I mean, just really mm -hmm. think about it because... Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Well, I think um, Matul is a partner that we expect. He, he has a very strong web presence. And it's not a matter of he's linked to us or, or we're linked to them. We can give, hopefully, deliver value to his center um, that fits within the context of what he wants to achieve. And you're right. This, By the way, remember, to, to your question about our business model, everything that we're developing is free. and. Um, but then my role is funding, so I have to find the funds to build it so that we can give it away. But that is our goal currently, to make it available to everyone. And it's a matter of um, who, who will value it. Eventually, the people who fund it will have to value it because they'll be the ones who are underwriting it. It also then depends on what they say, okay, tell me your measures, right? If, if all of a sudden it's usage, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. just... Well, th so I'm glad you said that because we have a... I opened up by saying 35-page um, PDFs. What's my metric? Uh, I already know what my metric is. So I'm looking for ways to share the information that we've developed. I'm looking for ways to communicate it, to see it used. Don often says, I'm not in the business of killing trees. Well, that was 10 years ago when we actually printed them all. <laughs> we had, I mean, we would go to a conference with a pile of documents this high. Luckily, we're not printing them anymore, but um, it is a matter of how really the fundamental mission for us is to share the knowledge we're developing from two years of research and then beyond, but with a model for doing that. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go. That's okay. Yeah. Phil, do you have any parting, so, parting shots? Uh, yes. Um, just about the whole day, really. Oh, sure. Um, I've, I've written it on that before. Okay. And, uh, as you know, when I first arrived, <laughs> I had no idea why I was here. <laughs> um, but uh, very soon, I felt as though uh, I'd come from Oh, great. So, Thank yeah. you. Thank you for that. It's great to yeah. meet you. Welcome to our community. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so that so that's sort of the, the quick and dirty of um, where we're heading, what we'll be testing, and then this is the big this is, this is the big idea. So well, so let's talk about this because 
as I thought about it, and I'm listening to people talk about mobile and ubiquity of mobile and how mobile is the delivery mechanism for people that are trying to do things in the field, and we completely believe that, building a big web presence just at the moment when people stop using desktops and decide to go out in the field with their smartphones, um, this is just a, a, a thought starter for us, and this would take um, focus, resources, commitment, and an understanding of what, the pe what people really wanted. So what about a mobile? Maybe you leapfrog over, right? Maybe mm -hmm. better to do an investment here. Mm -hmm. Greenfield. Well, we're, <laughs> we're kind of greenfield, so that would I mean, work. It, again, it goes back to who you're trying to reach, right? If you're trying to reach a broad group of people, I think that always is on for mobile first. And, and then you have to really think about what that experience is like. If you're, if you're designing for people like us, like, I would find out where are they? Are they spending a lot of time on the road? And this is, is that the best way to get the information? I'd still. But I just have seen a lot of people think that, you know, I've got my web presence, and then it's like, oh, you can't, you can look it up on the smartphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can, because you've got that big screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly right? smartphone optimized. Yeah, so, so let me ask this question, and I'll, I'll let you go, and thank you for your time. Um, thinking of your own organization, and if you would just brainstorm with me for a minute, um, the things we've been looking at, what might be valuable to you? I mean, I can see this certainly is a, is a great goal, but immediately thinking, going back to your company, needing to share information, having your own web presence, what would be useful first? So really, I, I go back to the, the matchmaking piece. Um, mm -hmm. Because this is about global solutions, it's about you know, mass yeah. collaboration, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately, it is about feedback. You know, You're talking about impact sourcing? So, no, we're talking about impact investment. Oh, sorry. So, okay. so, the matchmaking really, for me, is I think you could do a brilliant job of, of helping to, to, to match impact investors with you know, uh, <coughs> investees and impact, impact networks. Ah, uh, 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 right? And money matchmaking. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so ah. to to really help, you know, multiply the impact. Yeah. That the best ones are already having on the ground. Great, and that's a role that we can play versus. It's huge because because you imagine when investors, uh, you know, do go go through the whole kind of due diligence and all that kind of stuff. You've already done a ton of research on mm -hmm. what is and isn't working and why and mm -hmm. statistics and you know all this kind of stuff. And I think, you know, to, to, to put that in as a question. That's great. Yeah, we do. I mean, we definitely have a point of view, and we've met with a lot of foundations who are giving away a lot of money, and we'd love to chase that money out with them and say, look, you could do it this way, and you'd get a lot more return, yeah, but yeah. it's going to take some time. Yeah, I mean, I, I would echo the matchmaking value. Just to give you sort of an example from our perspective, our audience we see as this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know the top 100 to 500 names, right? There's a whole, you know, 2,000 or more folks when we come to an organization like yours who have insight into that sort of influencer community. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the point someone else raised about sort of also serving as a library of successful GSNs. Mm -hmm. I find myself, that's what I'm thinking the most about. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. So, to the extent you guys just literally just yep. totally a library of successful GSNs by topic or mm -hmm. by your network label, yeah. um, that would also be very valuable. And they can be cross sourced by type or by yeah. industry or by, yeah. by problem. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. And it also sounds like we want to reveal them at different levels of detail. So you might just want to get the web link. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or you that's might right. want to read yes. the paper. Yes. Right. Depends. Yes. Yeah. I will take the link for you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That. Yeah. And then but again, the more the more successful or the good gosh, those are great insight. That's where I would love to know more. Mm -hmm. But it just helps to be aware of mm -hmm. uh, sort I know Tara and I we're gonna have to kind of caucus to say, so what do we do with this? Do I think I don't 
I can't bring this back and have expect everyone's going to absorb it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be thinking about how do how can we use this information and the, and the uh, perspective and the relationships to further our not only our CSR strategy and portfolio, mm -hmm. but we also are just saying, gosh, you know, how might we introduce this also into other parts of the company again in terms right. of driving and influencing both business issues, but also social. Mm -hmm. So I think the question for us will be is how and where and what does that look like? But I wouldn't... Can't, can't say know, it. Too soon to say it. To, well, I would say it goes back to core context. GSN is not core to much of the people in the business. So our job is going to be how do we how do you translate it to make it? Well, we thought so because I think it says right. Well, right on your right on. Well, actually, it was right on your website when we wrote our proposal to you. It said on your website that this was core to your business. So we thought, we thought it was. Beautiful. If I could just quickly dovetail off that, I think when you first asked us about the video and animation, so in addition to figuring out how best to translate the form. Figuring out how best to translate this content and substance, <clears throat> assuming that the audience actually doesn't hasn't been exposed mm -hmm. to multi stakeholders. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's, that's, what Mary, that's what Mary's talking about. Like, so like, so we, right, so we know that, and maybe the executive boards of our companies know that, yeah. but the vast majority of employees don't speak right. this language at all. Exactly. Well, and right. to so, the gentleman from Accenture, like, yeah. it's the leaders three levels down, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. for yeah. us that, that like, yeah. Right at the just before and at VP, mm -hmm. those are the, that's the level that if we can do some major influencing, we would have a yeah. very big difference. But I, when you show a video, I have to I have to sell it to them in their language, yes. which means I've translated whatever this is into yeah. their language. So we are talking about potentially pitching to Mark McPhee, who is our SVP that runs our consulting group at Cisco. Right. We're going to have to majorly convert this into a story that makes sense this from his perspective and his strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It totally is a match, but I have to switch it into Cisco speak first. Okay. And then well, that's why we were guessing, and maybe we guessed wrong, but um, we're going to start off with a little library of videos. And theoretically, at one day, there'll be a click on a mobile phone. But in the meantime, if you needed to tell someone what is a GSN or what is a tax, what is a uh, Standards network, you could you'd have these little yeah. Clips. It's, not so much that. it's the what's in it for them. Mm. So it's the what's in it for him yeah. part. So what's in it for your audience? It also right. be interesting if you had two side by side videos. The first one you showed, and then there's a little lay person, and you you're interviewing Doctor. Like, what what do you mean by multi stake? You know what I mean? You could you could with the question the that was what you said. Add the question. Part. But even, yeah, even you starting before at GSM, like yeah. just describing why the world is different now, mm -hmm. right? Like that's, I think that's yes. what the We have the drivers. We actually, yeah. I, I don't mean to say, oh, yeah, we got that. We Don I mean, does four videos on what's, he said it earlier today, I think, you know, what are the drivers of, or yesterday, what are the drivers of GSMs? Right. But you're right. I mean, we have to build a foundation. In one, but have it in one spot. Like, I actually like the animation, I think, we're getting yeah. at that. Yeah, it's showing the exactly. The world is, the, the, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so That's the goal. Yeah. That I think would be very Okay. I think I think the animation does help that. Because for you to try to hold it in your head where someone says, Well, there are even Don's slide, well there are two reasons and three drivers. I guess first the two, then the three. Or you know. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking infographics too. Yeah. That's a nice thing behind, but I I, I agree if you, if you can get to the big trends. That are driving why the networks are important. Yeah. That's almost more important than understanding the 10 networks and all of that stuff. That's way more important of a message at the top line. You're right. You're right. And um, we you have. Don't know if helps, but that's the next layer. Yeah. The, the paper that Dawn wrote, the very first paper we published a year ago, which is the overview of the uh, Global Solution Networks, has the whole buildup in it. And we and that's what we're going to try to digest as a as a starting point. Yeah. But we have lots of work to do, and you've been so helpful. Thank you so much for staying. This is um, unbelievably valuable. And we and if you're interested in staying in the process with us, we'd love to have you. I know we talked about what Google knows about algorithms. I know you all know more about online education than almost anybody. I mean, I don't know about networks, but. <laughs> <laughs> 
So thank you very much. And if you'd like a drink at my hotel, I'm at the Old Bank Hotel, I'd be happy to stand you two around. Is that what they say? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot.